Laura, you're going to tell us about how you finished off this little quilt. It is so wonderful. It has so much texture and excitement and charm. Thank you, Frida. You're too sweet. I'll talk to you about how I did the, the hand stitchery and how I did this raft binding. It's very funky. Thank you. So with this little quilt, what I've done is a lot of hand stitchery. But to do the hand stitchery, of course, you have to start with a quilt top that has been steam set onto the batting. I've steamed it to the batting, and there's my Timtex. That's what gives it the shape around the edge. The Timtex and the batting will match up like that later on. But to do the hand stitching, I don't need the Timtex. I'll set it aside, and I'm going to be stitching just through the back layer and the top layer like this. Whenever I start hand stitching a fused art quilt, I always start with the most important element or the focal point in the quilt. In this case, it's our little bird sitting in her nest. I'm going to use some of my hand dyed threads that I make. These are in a size 12. There's a size 12. I would use that probably in the leaves down there. I love this variegation of color. And then around her I have a, this is called Sprouts, and I've outlined her with an outline stitch using a size 8 pearl cotton. I like the 12 and the 8 for, for working on this type of quilt. Here's another size 12. Do you see the change in scale? The size 12 pearl cotton is much finer than 8. So when I do my hand stitching, I make sure that I match up the right thread with the right needle, the right embroidery needle. So I've made myself this little chart right here. Um, with a size 12 thread, I'd use a size 5 embroidery needle, and with my size 8 thread, I'm going to use a size 4, or I could even use a size 3 embroidery needle. This chart is available for you on my blog. It's under the Threadducation page, so be sure to look for that on Threadducation. So, there's my little bird. I want to do some hand stitching on it. I keep my um, threads on a ring like this. I don't know if you can see that, but it's just a little metal ring, and the threads are sort of looped on there and held on there. This way I can keep them nice and neat. And when it's time to pull off a thread, what I'm going to do is draw the thread right from the center, like that. I'll pull the thread, and as I pull the thread, everything kind of curls up like that. But as the thread comes out, everything lays back flat again. So that's how I get my threads ready for my hand stitchery. I'd like to show you how to make one of my favorite stitches, which is called the pistol stitch. Here's the pistol stitch right up here. We're going to make her a little hairdo. We'll do some pistol stitches along the crown or the crest of her head. So the first thing you do is, there's my needle and thread. I'm going to bring the needle and thread up to the top. The pistol stitch is a lot like a French knot. There's my needle and thread. When you make a French knot, you know how you wrap it around one, two, three times like that, and you would put the needle almost right back in the same spot? Well, with a pistol stitch, you do the same thing. You start one, two, three. But this time, when you put it down, you don't put it here. The tip of the needle goes about a quarter of inch, a quarter of an inch away from where you came out of the fabric. So there it is, just like that. And I'll take my pistol stitch and uh, my needle and thread, and I'll pop it through. Oops, pop it through, and slowly pull it through so it doesn't tangle like that. So that's my pistol stitch. Isn't that cool? She'll end up having a whole row of those across the top of her head. It's sort of like her little hairdo. Now that she's all stitched, or when she's finally stitched, and I want to show you just the difference a stitch makes. Do you see the flower here? This is before stitching, this is after stitching. Stitching, the thread adds those little elements to the surface that you can't get with fabric. It's a way to outline things, to help define things like this lazy daisy, and to add these wonderful textures to the surface. Isn't it great how it takes it from something that's kind of flat to fabulous? Let's pretend this is all stitched. Really, I, I have a lot more stitching to do on this one. But I do have a quilt where all the handwork is done. There's my hand. Uh, all the hand stitching is done on this little quilt. There it is. When I stitch, I'm just kind of skimming through the batting like that, the top of the quilt. And it's, all the stitching is done, so I'm going to get my Timtex, and I'll get my batting, and I'll match them up again just like that. That's how they go. And now I'm going to wrap the front to the back. This is how you do the wrapped binding. 
So here we go. Everything's placed. See how they all match up? I'll start at a corner and I'll fold that corner in and I'll just tack it with an iron, just like that. I'm going to do each corner like that. I form sort of a 90 degree angle like that. And I'll just iron them a little bit with the iron and then later on I can flip the ends up. Here, I'll show you on this end here. So all my corners were tacked down and then I flipped the sides up like that and I fused tack down the edges like that. When I iron them, I have to kind of tug on this fabric so that I can match that nice curve and I'll have those nice curvy edges all the way around the edge of the quilt. Now you have all this big open area here in the back. What you want to do with that is take your random acts of fusing. Random acts of fusing is all those leftover fabrics that you have and you'll fit those on top like that and you'll put the random acts of fusing on the back and fill in the back. You'll steam set this and then once it's steam set you can do the machine stitching which is so easy to do through Timtex. I'll do all my machine stitching. I'll put a little loop on the top so I can hang my quilt up and of course I'll write the title and my name on the back and proudly add the Chicago School of Fusing label. Thanks Laura for sharing all that with us. Those hand stitches really make this little quilt sing. Add so much character. I love the idea of taking this really fast technique of making a fused art quilt and then adding the slow technique of hand stitchery on the surface. It really brings it to life. It does. You're such an artist. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs>